Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Friday. I'm back, guys. If you're listening, there is a high chance that you also get up early like we do. Yeah. Mm. And you will know that when you come off a week of holidays or two weeks of holidays like we had, Takes you a little bit takes of time you to, to get the engine up, Swanee. Absolutely, to get back in the swing yes. of things. Last night I was in bed at seven thirty. Oh, jeez, that's, that's unbelievable! Childish. And I was clock watching from four thirty, going, get is, up. "Is now Tell too early? Up. Is now too early?" And I made myself so busy until seven thirty, and then I went, "I cannot keep my eyes open anymore." Beautiful. So I went to bed at seven thirty. Oh I God. read for an hour. I am back. That's, I'm back in the swing. It was a nice morning this morning. You could have walked to work, Swanee. I could have. I could have. I could have. Well, that's good. Uh, me and Dino were in the gym yesterday. Oh, yeah. Down in yes, the car really park, getting John. car park strong. Car park strong. I'm just inspired <gasps> by the great man. <gasps> is car park yeah, strong? Tank. Is car park strong stronger <laughs> than gym strong? Absolutely. Oh, it is. I feel like it is. It's Absolutely. way tougher. Yeah. Yeah. Just inspire you. He was doing burpees, <laughs> push ups, <laughs> yeah. planks. Mate. If Bicep I'm, curls. If I'm not sweating, I'm wasting time. Absolutely. That's impressive to do burpees when no one is telling you to do burpees. Oh, I think that's the most. That's good. Like the only time I've ever done a burpee is when someone is next to me going, do the burpee. No. Yeah. I, I, at the end of it, to a four punch combo. So you get up and go, bang, bang, bang. It was like Mike Tyson punched the shit out of that bike <laughs> on, the, on the airplane. That <laughs> footage is alarming. Oh, yeah. We should talk about it, actually. Have you seen know. it all? That guy's a. A, a knob. We'll do it in we'll do it in Goss. No. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Look smarter these holidays. With whatif.com, you can book everything for your trip all in one place. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. Make up for missed holidays with what if. It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. Swanee, this is a celebration of a great mate of mine, Kevy Elms, who uh, died the other no, passed away. Mm-hmm. He's about eighty five years old. Kevy is an absolute legend in my world, Swanee, mm-hmm. uh, in the Fitzroy Football Club slash the Brisbane Lions Football Club. He was a trainer for over 60 years. Wow. An absolute legend, and a lot of people are probably listening now would know of Kevy. Uh, he think- lived over in Heidelberg, Swanee. Mm. He was a train- He was the head trainer at the Fitzroy Lions when my dad was a player oh, in the man. 70s. I've been very interested in people that live to... Was he a happy man? Bloody oath he was. Right. I've been very interested in... Thinking about people that live to a very old age and are happy, you know, in the in the later years of their life or throughout their lives. Oh yeah. And I want to ask you about Kevy. Do you think that that was his passion that he was living his dream and bringing doing a job that brought him great joy? Absolutely, because it's important. I think. Uh, admittedly, Swanee, well, he was self admitted that uh, a pretty ordinary footballer, but right. he realised he had the touch. He had the touch to help young yeah, footballers right. back in the 60s. Yeah. So he eventually got a job at the Lions at Fitzroy and looked after him because he's a Heidelberg boy, Swanee. Yes. Uh, what about this for a CV? A wharfy, worked in the meatworks and a truckie. Oh, nice. Okay. And that's, hey, that's just the entree. He also <laughs> moonlighted. As a pro wrestler. That's wow. not true. That's not true. Mate, I'm telling you, I've got the fight poster, and his nickname, or his name, was Ivan the Terrible. <laughs> this That's is awesome. brilliant. So he was a Russian. He was a Russian pro wrestler. So back in the days, in the 60s and 70s, Swanee, you know when pro wrestling has sort of had a bit of a yeah. um, thing here in Australia? Mm. So he was Ivan the Terrible. He was the villain. And he would come out, and he would come out to the boos of the crowd and the heckles in the house, yes. and he would put on the big Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Wow. It was magnificent. Once he went to Launceston, it was a full stadium there at Launceston, yeah. and he accidentally knocked out the hero wrestler. He was fighting because he was supposed to always get beaten off in the terrible. What are you end. saying that they're, they're coordinated? He didn't mean that. He didn't mean <laughs> that. That it's a pantomime. What? <laughs> Kevy knocked out, accidentally knocked a bike out, and had to be police escorted out of the stadium. Oh my god! Because they're trying to kill him. Oh my god! Wow! Wow. It was an absolute beauty, like a a legendary man. So every time you go in to the rooms before before grand final, Swanee, whatever, you'd have the training gear, have have the white pants on, have the lions gear, and he'd always he was very protective um, of some of us boys, some of his favourites. Yeah, a pikey myself, Chrissy Johnson. Every time you'd walk Top in, three. Every yeah. time you'd walk into the, the strapping room to get the rub down, so he'd, he'd strap your ankles, then you come back half an hour later for the rub down. You walk in, the, and if one of the other trainers said, "I, I got a spare bed," I go, "Just get away, get away." <laughs> 
Don't touch him. You're not allowed to touch him. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was hilarious. Him They're and, my thighs. Yeah, absolutely. Him and his mate, Lance. He go, I'll put the special touch. I'll, I'll put the special touches on you, son. Oh, yes. Oh, and, then, um, and then he'd tell you stories, Swanee. So it'd be great. The rookies yes. would come in. And I'd get him to tell stories about his wrestling days. And these young rookies would go, geez, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Who is this man? So I went out to Kevy's place <laughs> the other night. He, he'd been crook. Uh, he'd come home from hospital. I said he's bed up in hospital. And I spent uh, I spent an hour or so with him. And it was funny because he was. Uh, I walked in the door and he goes, who's that? And I said, it's, it's Brownie because his memory's sort of going a bit. Yeah. And he goes... Ah, oh, how are you, son? And he said, you come down from Brisbane? I said, yeah, I got in the car last night and drove down for yes. you. He still thinks I live up there. Yeah. He goes, how's Nicole going? Because he thinks Nicole is Kylie. Kylie. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Um, so we ran through it. I said, ah, oh, what about the night I kicked eight against the Bombers? <laughs> Kevin, you put the finishing touches on me. He goes, He'd oh. remember that. Oh, he goes, you're magnificent that day, son. You're magnificent. <laughs> yes. oh. And then I went out to see. Uh, yes. So then I went, I let him go for five or ten minutes, have a spell. I went out and saw his wife, Alice, and uh, who made me a coffee and sat there in the kitchen. Then I come back and then he hears the door, hear me coming back into the living room door, mm. and he goes, who's that? And I go, it's Brownie. He goes, oh, g'day, son. I can't believe you drove down from Brisbane. Oh, bless. I thought, beautiful. Oh. I said, what about that night against Essen? And Kevin goes, oh, you're magnificent. <laughs> I said, can you believe I kicked 20 that night? How's he? He goes, oh, oh you're magnificent, son. <laughs> Did you? Oh, you must have loved that so oh, much. Did you go out and come back in again? It's me again. I kicked 30 by the yeah, next time I came Yeah, of course did, of course. So, Barley, Kevy, Alms got a massive funeral next Wednesday, Swanee. Uh, honestly, the, the, the church won't be big enough. The cemetery won't be big enough. There'll be that many people that'll flood in. What a great testament to what a great man. What an absolute man. bloody legend. Ivan the Terrible, Kevy Elms. Ever wanted to offer the team some direct feedback? Well, you can. Shoot us an email at breakfast at nova100.com.au to be part of Chrissy Sam and Brownie's mailbag. Oliver Twist. He's a comedian, and yes, it's his real name, and oh, I could imagine how fun it would be having to show his identification to just about anyone. Oliver's show Grio is at the Town Hall tonight until Sunday night. Tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. Here's Oliver. First of all, Oliver Twist. Wow, this is loud. Welcome. Is it Grio? I want to say Griot. It is Grio. Many, many a times people have just said Griot, and I'm like, that that's not it. Um, just uh, It's just Grio with a silent E. What does it mean? It means a storyteller. So back where I'm from um, in East Africa, it's, it's a term that goes around, and it's just like traditionally would, they would go these griots. They're called griots because they would go from village to village telling these kind of cautionary tales, these kind I of love funny that. stories. So if you come to my show, Grio, it kind of feels... Like this kind of little intimate space at the Melbourne Town Hall, so it's that cool. that kind of feeling, just sharing some stories. Fantastic, Swanee, you've done time with Oliver. I have. Oliver was one of the uh, headline acts on the uh, Nova stand-up event called One Night Stand, and you were fantastic, by the way. Amazing, amazing set. I mean, it's only five minutes, but you really, you know, you've got to all, th- all, th- all. What is it? All thriller, no filler. <laughs> um, but there was a situation. It was that same week that uh, Will Smith got up on stage and hit Chris Rock in the face at the Oscars. Yes. And you had, I, I, it's the most unusual sort of heckle situation I've ever seen. A woman got up and sort of politely requested that she wanted to hit you. Yeah, requested and insisted. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, it was that, so weird. Really? Uh, yeah, it, it, well, she said that it was a bet, that, like, before the show, she'd bet with her friends that they should go to a comedy show yeah. and do what Will Smith did. Now, it's, What it's, a fun bet. Oh, what a, what a real cool. fun inspiration Will Smith is sending to everyone. She to wasn't, just, the, uh, wasn't the person on the flight with Mike Tyson, was it? Sounds <laughs> no, like she'd had a few drinks. <laughs> so from your perspective, when did you know that, wait, she's coming up on set? Well, the, the thing is, it was towards the end of the set, and I was like, before I leave, let's talk about the elephant in the room, right? Yeah. And I just wanted to talk about the whole thing, like, kind of briefly from Chris Rock's perspective and she got up and was like, oh, I have... I have the Will Smith perspective. <laughs> and I was like, okay. She was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slap you. And it, the Nova gig was at the lower Melbourne Town Hall. So the stage is a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah, so. And thank God for that. Thank goodness for yeah. that. I can see the top of her head. I was like, I'm, I'm just going to kick you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, 
I mean, I, I've been taking some jiu-jitsu classes. So I was like, <laughs> I should be fine. I will absolutely be fine. She was absolutely drank. Yeah. But the the end of that story is me and my partner, after the show, we went to a restaurant to get some food. And guess who is there? Yes. That same lady. That she woman. taps me on the shoulder. She's like, I'm so sorry. I apologize. That's my family over there. And they're like embarrassed, oh, yeah, just face right. down the Jeez. whole time. I was oh, like, oh, man. my goodness. Mom. Oh, my goodness. I just, she picked up the bill. <laughs> um, how are you going at the festival? Are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying it very much. I have three more shows to do, and then uh, I head back to Sydney uh, to do Sydney Comedy Festival, yeah. which will be really, really fun. Yes, yeah, my first time at Melbourne International Comedy Festival. I'm having a lot of fun. I love it when um, I get to talk to somebody who's you know, having their first time at the festival how do you describe what goes on there? It sounds like, it feels like it would be like school camp or something. Yeah, because it's, it's four weeks. It's like mm. an intense, it really an intense camp that you just go to. Just a marathon of shows night after night. It's the longest shows I've done back to back. So my throat is like, uh, you know, killing me mm. yeah. by the end of it. Um, so you have to pace yourself. Are you seeing any other like shows that. as well? You know what? I'm a little bit kind of... Um, weird about that where I'm like, oh, I have my own show, so I don't go to see as many shows, uh, but I have seen friends' shows here and there. My friend Rowan Thamba has a show at the Chinese Museum, and I want to see his show. It's really fun, fantastic. It's called Bimbi. Um, but, yeah, not that many. What's the favourite part of the show? Because I, I think it'd be incredibly difficult the last couple of years, you know, comedians are just talking about COVID, because that's all we've done. Yeah. Mm. So this is a show I was meant to do in 2020, Hola, um, which is the year that they kind of really pretty much uh, stopped everything. So not much has changed from that show, so I don't talk a lot about COVID. My favourite part of this show is a kind of a story that happened um, halfway through the pandemic where my mom just started spreading rumours because she was just bored. You know, when, like halfway through, she just started spreading rumours about a whole lot of people. And where she lives in uh, Ipswich in East Queensland, is a very small town. So yeah. the rumours were going of Brisbane. Fast. Yes. Um, so th that's my favourite part of the story, of the whole show. It's kind of like right in the middle there. It's It's been fun to... Do that. Jeez, Fantastic. Man, yeah. I hope she wasn't making up stories about you, mate. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, I would hope not. <laughs> so uh, two or three more shows left. What day is it? Three more to go? Three yeah, more. Three so more. I, have, I have one tonight, um, tomorrow night, and then Sunday night. And if you're going to see Oliver Twist on any of these nights, if you think you're going to get up on that stage, just know <laughs> that you're going to get a size 10 Reebok <laughs> to the face because he knows jujitsu. Absolutely. Get in to see Oliver's show, Grio. I love that. I love learning a new word as well. Um, uh, tonight, tomorrow night, night after, at the Town Hall, tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. Thanks for getting up so early to see us, Oliver. Of course. Thank you for having me. Oliver Twist. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. We're talking about Run the Tan now, and I was thinking, uh, what's the best song with the word run in it? It's yeah, obviously. It? It's obviously that one. I'm not going to have my uh, my trusty Jabra Elite wireless headphones on Jabra on Sunday. Elite. The Jabra, Jabra. Elites. Um, because I'm going to be talking to our beautiful listeners who are joining me to walk the tan in Run oh, really? the Tan. Yeah. I thought you'd just put oh, I love that. The visual of that, Swanee, yeah. <laughs> like the Pied Piper, yeah. but with headphones on. Can you yeah. imagine? Yeah, the big, like the big ones too. Like How rude. In, Don't talk to me. <laughs> like Nova Boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, like Le LeBron James walking into the, uh, yes. the basketball study. Absolutely. No, yeah. that would be the height of rudeness because you can walk with me, uh, get all the details at the Nova Win page. So what you do is this. If you want to do it with me, it's going to be very easy and very fun. Mm. Don't. For years I stopped, I, I didn't do anything like that because I thought, oh, I don't want to get all huffy and puffy. We're not going to get huffy and puffy, don't yeah. worry. We're strolling. Mm -hmm. We're enjoying each other's company. And we're raising money and awareness for mental health charities, which is very important. Go to the Nova FM webpage, novafm.com.au. Find the win page. Mm -hmm. And then you scroll down and it says walk with Chrissy at Run the Town. It couldn't be easier. Beautiful. Put your details in and then beautiful Andy Kay and Annie our team here will contact you and tell you everything you need to do, including where to go, what time to meet, all that sort of bizzo. What we'll, time is it, roughly? Around 10. 
Beautiful. It's around 10, but there's going to be sort of administrative details that need to be ticked off good. before that. Um, it's good weather too. I'm it's just going to reconfirm great weather. it again. 19, 19. 19. Partly cloudy. You could not get a better Sunday morning. You could not. Morning. You're doing a good thing. And it's 3.8 kilometres. We're not going to be running. We're not even... We, we've got no time limit. If it takes us seven hours, it takes us seven hours. Mm. Not once have I ever regretted doing a little bit of a run or a walk. Correct. And you, you never get to do, do it point. with Swanee. And I'm very, very well, excited. Time I got chased by the cops. That was rough. It wasn't as good. But, that anyway, was rough. but you got your PB. They, well, they caught me. Yeah. They caught me, though. Because oh, no. the copper obviously got his PB as well. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's all right. Well, come along with me. I'm also going to put it on my Instagram page with the link to the exact page you need to go to on the Nova FM webpage. And I think we might do it on Chrissy Sam and Brownie as well. Couldn't be easier. See you Sunday morning. Cannot wait. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. So exciting to have the gorgeous Dave O'Neill in. Yes, still COVID three after 956 days. That's amazing. Yeah, well, apparently NASA and CSIRO want to do a study on me. So, yeah, so uh, they should. The perfect human specimen. There might be something about that. <laughs> I know be... I don't look like it. Oh, you, you are, though. You, you do, do look It's like a sausage it. roll on a Diet Coke every day. It looks like, uh, it looks like maybe that corner is the special... COVID oh, corner yeah, because Sam Pang, who usually Pang. stands there, is also COVID free. It's incredible that he's COVID free. It's amazing. Mm. Is, right, he, is he definitely COVID free? I'm not sure. We'll have to, uh, have to suss him out a little bit. Have you, you ever felt, have you ever ha- felt well, like he's very, had it? he's very, he's very secretive, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he is, he is. You yeah. wouldn't know. You wouldn't know if he had a second wife or anything like that. He's no. one of those guys. Well, you well, wouldn't know have, that, but you'd know if he had COVID. But he may have had it at the start. I know people that have had it at the very start and they didn't really know what they had. Mm. Have you ever... Are you still doing rats, man? Yeah. I, you might have had it. Man, I carry, one, I carry a, posit- a negative one around with me all the time. Just pull that out any <laughs> opportunity. It's about three weeks old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you he's affected, Great Swanee. Uh, the AFL boys are still affected because there's people going down left, right and centre yeah. yeah. all the time. But uh, hey, and there's no footy There's no footy around town until Sunday night. The big clash, your boys... Mm. Richmond take on Melbourne Sunday night at the MCG. How good Gee, that going to be? I wonder who will win. Anzac Day. Oh, gee, you already yeah. dropped off from that. Yeah. yeah, I have. And Anzac Day, Collingwood versus Essendon Monday, of course. That'll Very be nice. And also, we've got tickets to give away. For Best on Ground, you want to come and join the live audience, our new show. I recommend it. I was Saturday there night. on the debut episode. Swanee was there on the debut. I was like a show mum. She was whooping it up. I was. She, I was. There was no Will Smith gear. No. Out of the crowd. No. But uh, huh. very supportive, Swanee. Thank you. So give us a call, 13 24 10, if you want to be part of that live audience it's Saturday fun. night. The band is good. And who is that hot lead singer? Uh, Phil Serrano? No, Russell Robinson. <laughs> Phil Serrano. He's an ex Melbourne player. Have you seen player? Russell Absolutely. Robinson? Oh, my God. Yeah, he's hot. He's, he's ex Melbourne. Goosebumps. Yeah. I think I jumped the fence for Russell. Was he um, was he from Melbourne? Yeah. What is it about Melbourne yeah. players and me? And they he, absolutely tick all my boxes. He used to take big hangers too. Yes, yes. Like Russell. Yes. He was a star. He was a star. Yeah, in absolute day. star. Yeah. So uh, come along. They load you up. They give you a few drinks beforehand and Dude. have a bit of feed. Free absolutely. drinks. It's a fun night. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Over One Hundred in Pangy's chair. It's our friend. It's Uncle Dave. And one of my favourite people in the whole universe. Universe. Well, it's great to be here. It's fantastic to be here. The comedy festival's finishing up this weekend, mm. and I had a great... I only did 12 shows early on. Dino came along. We, Brownie dropped by. I missed you this year. <laughs> I apologise. Dang it, I, I've just been in you, school holiday hell, oh, Dave. I know. I've been down the beach in yeah. school holiday hell. Pang and I had been daytime drinking at some local footy. With and Panga, his brother. Uh, the, both Pangs. And then we oh. called you on the way to your show. You didn't know we were coming. And then you surprised us because you were like, nah, don't come. Well, I, I don't like knowing that people are there. I'd, I'd rather not. You're a pro. Yeah, I know. Really? I know I'm a pro. I didn't I'm not know a pro. That about you. But I loved, I loved meeting Panger. He's, I've met him before. But as I said to Sam, he's like you without all the showbiz rubbish. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, and Sam like a, would agree. I think, I think he yeah. agrees. But, you know, you give me a bit of stick on this show because I give away tickets to my show. And then uh, Hollywood Jack or Vicky gives my personal number out to these punters. And because I just, no, I just I text them. So I, mm. I I get I get their numbers and I text them from my home my phone. I still Did can't you just call that. Vic Vicky. Yeah, well, is that no, her no, mother no, name no. or it's not her name? Or no Tori one. Victoria? No, oh Victoria! Or Salty. No one calls her Vicky. Okay, you no, have to run no. that by me. I'm Sorry, a, you're the you, no, she's, she's your my sister. sister that's right. <laughs> 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 anyway, anyway, so I would get these numbers off Victoria, mm. and then I would send them a message saying, "Hey, yeah, come to my show tonight if you want." Blah blah. Does blah. anybody like take advantage of that information? Never. Never. I get more hassle from Guide Dogs Australia. 
I have to say, rang me yesterday, <laughs> and I am always very, very supportive because my uncle's blind and has a dog, even though he's moved to Queensland, because Meals on Wheels is better. Yeah. That's why he moved. <laughs> Did Better the, meals uh, and more excursions in the Queensland. Dog, the dog moved to Queensland. Yeah, as well. oh, absolutely. And also think of a better reason to move to Queensland. I'll wait. <laughs> mm. Better meals on wheels. That's is great. that right? I wonder what yeah. the difference. I, I wonder why. What it is. I'd like well, to do a bit of a deep dive into this. Yeah, he lived in Richmond, and then he yeah he said that he, he's moved to Harvey Bay, and he said the meals on wheels are just a lot better. Wow, well, more seafood up there. Yeah, yeah. maybe more selections, yeah. more mango salads. Yeah, a lot of mango. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. not one drunk dial, not one inappropriate no. picture. Everyone's never. been totally respectful. Never, never, never. None if of that. If you've got, if you do have Dave O'Neill's number, if you've ever won a competition and you've got Dave O'Neill's number, <laughs> please call send him now. something. No, call it right now. Send no, no, him, send send him a dick pic. Send him a picture of your boobs. <laughs> Send well, me a picture funny, of your boobs. Did, make an old man happy for yeah, once. I do yeah. talk about that because cause what happened then, so uh, <laughs> so I, I, got, I had a young woman called Steph mm. and um, she said, thanks so much for the tickets. We should have... I'll shout you a drink afterwards. Oh, that's lovely. Like, oh, Steph, I'm a married man. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be having drinks with young women. You, you absolutely can. have a drink can. with someone. You oh, well, Come you've got on. a bar in your room where you do the show. There is a bar. We can have a drink there. Yes. Anyway, so while I was at the show, I, I, I started talking to a guy in the audience. I was picking on a guy called Harry, who's the guy who won the car. Oh, yes. Harry. Yeah. Yeah. How is he? Young Harry. He's good. He's a young trade. He's a young carpenter. Yeah. Jokes aren't funny. Guy. He won. Yeah, he won mm-hmm. jokes aren't funny. And because um, I kept picking on him because he looked from stage he looked quite slight and like I said are you really a carpenter mm. like or a plumber or something mm. like that he is yeah. and he goes why don't you talk to why don't you talk to Steph you're a big fan of his Steph's a bloke yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. yeah he's a big Greek bloke. Oh. This is a guy. I've been catfished by Steph. Stephanos. <laughs> I think he, is he on the on line? On the phone we have <laughs> Steph. Oh. How are you going? Steph. This is magnificent, Steph. Steph. Steph, you often have a drink with me, didn't you, Steph? You're going to buy me a drink. and Yeah, I have. You actually legged it pretty quick. I think you pulled the old eyes. It might need it upstairs, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had to do a gig upstairs. It's true. He actually does have to go straight upstairs. That Sometimes. wasn't a lie. But would you have had a beer with Steph? Steph, would sure. you have actually honoured your your uh, offer? 100%. And yeah, ha- yeah. how did you enjoy the show, Steph? Because you're a younger man, and I do talk a lot about, you know, John Farnham and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, um, I learned a lot on your show. <laughs> Hey, it, was, uh, it was like a it was like a history lesson. But it was history lesson. <laughs> hey, was he uh, was he getting into the hecklers? Was he uh, yeah, past Harry. Harry? Harry. He, he picked on Harry and he stuck with Harry. Um, I like that. I think Steph. yeah, it was probably the you know the short side. Just it? like those ballerinas a couple of years ago. Oh, oh, we were watching last year. You were on fire. Steph, do you recall the moment in the show where Dave produces uh, some walnuts that resemble testicles? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was, uh, I think that was how you wrapped it up. That's how we wrapped it up. <laughs> the big fish. <laughs> the big finish. Steph, I need to ask, did, did Wuhan the bat make an appearance? No. Yeah. So what's I the, talked about Wuhan, but so I don't bring him out. You put a bullet in Wuhan? Yeah, yeah, my, my, you know, my wife said it was like I had a breakdown when I bring out the puppet. So <laughs> now I just do the voice with a, hey, everyone, I'm here. You, uh... Yeah, I was talking to Adam <laughs> Rosenbach's after his show, <laughs> which is very good. Go and see it. But we were talking about you. He's a, such a huge fan of you. Oh, he's a good guy, Adam. And uh, he, he said, oh, yeah, he did the bat, but without the puppet. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, there's never been a more Dave O'Neill sentence great. than that. Well, Steph, um, Steph, you guys should have a beer one day. We will. Uh, Dave was a bit flat though when, she, when he realised Steph was uh, a, a, big, a big Greek bloke. A big Greek bloke. Yeah, yeah he just was. wasn't Steph, uh, a middle-aged lady. Steph, were you surprised to be texting Dave O'Neill directly? Uh, yeah, I was at first. Um, I thought it could have been, you know, an assistant or something. But then when I realised Dave introduces himself on his own show, I was, you know. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I introduced myself on Please the Please welcome Dave O'Neill. <laughs> We're going to send you to the movies, mate, uh, at the Flash Recliners, hoits.com.au. Extra comfy recliners. Two tickets. You could take Dave and yeah. get him some popcorn. Yeah. Oh, no. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Now we haven't done this in a while. Yeah. It's called Has It Aged Well? Yes. It's where I, for you, my friends, and the listener, go through. Uh, the history of television mm. to see how we've evolved on television. Oh, I love this. Well, you did Man O' Man. Oh, yeah. I've got a bit of Man O' Man first, actually, Dave. Oh. 
Man Oh Man, one of the nuttiest shows that lasted one season. Mm -hmm. It's where men would uh, do a bizarre... um, They push in the pool. A bizarre was, contest was, where they prove that they're the was, most worthy man yeah, of the town. it was a town. dating contest, wasn't it? But mm-hmm. not really. Like, someone just won and they didn't go on a date with anyone. Very yeah, it bizarre. Was very yeah. weird. Very bizarre. I knew one of the uh, models. You did? One of the Channel 7 models, yeah. Very good friends with, uh, uh, with her. And, uh, yeah, she used to be one of the models that would come along and push you into the pool. Mate. It was a fantastic show. It hasn't aged well. Not at all. No. Um, so I was watching it. And by the way, this is this is one of my great joys. I, like, I get the giggles at home a lot for some reason. Mm. And uh, this sort of content is just right up my alley. Okay. Old Australian. Goodness. So you've got the theme here. Set oh, the yeah. scene. It's just a studio full of really drunk ladies. Yeah. They're hammered. Yeah. And, hammered. Hey, Swan, they're aggressively grabby, let me tell you. Yeah, they are. Um, there's this one contestant called... Adrian the Butcher. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Adrian Sounds the Butcher. That's who you want to go out with. He was mm. struggling the whole night, right, in this contest, Adrian Aussie. the Butcher. In the talent show bit, he decided to do painting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but you could tell. You could just tell that he thought, seconds before going on, he thought, this isn't enough. I can't just paint on telly. I can't even paint. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> so what he does is, just he's, he loses his mind. He starts licking the paint off the easel and then licking the canvas. Wow. Really? I'm sure it was toxic, John. Of course yeah, it was. Yeah, of course. His tongue would have been, remember, uh, his tongue would have been like a kablooey. Yes. Remember kablooeys back in the 90s? No, I don't know kablooeys. Now these lollies, they're big at school and you'd get them and they're like on the end of a ring and you would suck them and you'd end up with a blue tongue. Ah. It's oh. kablooeys. Adrian, so later on there's a segment where all the ladies in the crowd ask them questions. And Adrian... High stakes. Adrian's answer... It's just gorgeous. Oh, Hi, Adrian. If you wrote a book, what would it be about? If I wrote one? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> probably shooting. <laughs> <laughs> shooting. Adrian. <laughs> what a catch. How's it think? This sounds as if they haven't been prepped before. It's so sad. Yeah. It's, yeah, no, there's no, yeah, there's not, I don't think there was a lot of prepping when he knew it. So, Holly shooting. But then he changed, he, he straightened up a bit. I'll play it again. Hi, Adrian. You if on? you wrote a book, what would it be about? If I wrote one? Mm-hmm. Um, probably shooting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd probably be a romantic novel. <laughs> <laughs> One nah. or the other, same thing. Nah, shooting. not shooting. Nah, a romantic nah. novel. I got it wrong. Sorry. Uh. Yeah, so he read The Temperature of the Room. I can oh watch Man O' Man f- forever. I want to find Adrian the Butcher. I wonder what he's doing now. Yeah, he's, I'll try. He's in prison. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> um, hey, the best $60, annual $60 I've ever spent mm. is on the HeyHey.TV subscription. It was on the other night. Mate, yeah. how many seven. subscribers do you reckon they've got? That's a great question. I'm definitely a part of it. Because co- Daryl's behind that. That's all Daryl Summers. And it's Summers. only $60 a year. Annually, so it's paid for itself. Well, that's cheap. Many times. Not really. <laughs> that's <laughs> cheap. You get every, cheap. You get $5 it. a month. I, mean, I was on Hey Hey at least eight times. I'll, I'll find you. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll be on there. Were you playing celebrity heads or something? Yeah, I never did that, but I did joking off a lot. You know, remember joking off? Yeah, it's like a little. And I did stand up on Hey Hey. Yeah. Oh, I'll find it. I'll dig it out. Anyway, red faces was everyone's favorite. Oh yeah. Mm. If you were at a friend's family friend's house, <laughs> we'll go home after red faces. Yes. Yeah, because that was yeah. one of the. I remember in the eighties, you'd watch that and then go out. Yeah, yes. right. On a Saturday yeah. night. Yeah. So just have a listen to the Daryl introducing this one act that, again, this is primetime TV, mm. 1993. <laughs> Caroline and Fifi, the singing poodle. Welcome back to Caroline and Fifi. The singing so Caroline and Fifi walk out. Now, I've texted you of what Caroline and Fifi look like, all yeah. of you guys. Yes. It's just this tiny girl with a poodle. And yes. just, let's just enjoy it. Hi, I'm Caroline, and this is Fifi. And what we're going to do for you is I'm going to sing, and she's going to copy me. Sounds fun, right? Yeah. I, I remember this girl. I remember it. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember yes. it too. I yeah. watched it live, yeah. So Caroline and Fifi are sitting there, and Caroline starts singing first, because I'd imagine at home she starts singing, and then Fifi the dog sings with her, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> Still Caroline. 
suddenly you see the fear of God in our eyes because Fifi's not playing ball. Yeah, yeah not singing. I yeah. think it's the like, showbiz lights. This is hilarious. This poor poodle's getting like his starstruck, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stage fright. Mm. But then it all changes. And I'm going to play out the entire rest of the performance. Amazing. And just bear in mind, primetime TV. Oh, yeah. yeah. And wait for the moment where you hear Fifi join in because she sounds like a possessed demon. <laughs> Squeeze it a bit harder. <laughs> the sound effect guy kicks in. So at the moment, primetime telly, it's a girl holding a dog howling to millions of people across the country. But she can't control the dog now. <laughs> She's really trying to G up the dog. It's not working. Just remember, oh Red God. had the gong. Yeah, Red, come on, Red, Red Dongy. could have gonged this at any moment. Right. Gonging Red. Now the crowd seems to be into it. <laughs> oh, so the dog's in now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, so this isn't an act. Dogs do this all the time. Oh, Red's not gonging this. TV's changed, man. It has. Yes, it has. <laughs> hey, hey. TV. I couldn't recommend getting it anymore. I love it. It's the best one you've ever seen. Hey, hey. Neither. Well, I can. <laughs> Listen. Nova, Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang, and Jonathan Brown. Chrissy's celebrity star. In the situation on a flight, Mike Tyson has punched a passenger. Hasn't he learned anything from Will Smith? Yes. <laughs> Uh, he says the man that he punched repeatedly on a plane on Wednesday was not only harassing him, but also threw a water bottle at him before the fight. Mm. Mm. Poor Mike. I've got to say, it is very. it looks very annoying. The guy's but very annoying, isn't he? The it? guy's very annoying. Full knob. So the, the guy, and he's drunk. There's nothing more annoying oh. than well, a drunk an, man on a flight. And they're both in business class, too. They are. So obviously Mike's in business class, but you, you were surprised that this other guy's in mm. business class because just some young... And he's already drunk. Tosser. Yeah, he's already drunk, and yes. he was annoying him. I mean, there's no excuses, but my God, he will not forget the day Mike Tyson <laughs> leaned over the back of a chair and... Launched a at him, laid into him. I think we've got some audio. Hey, One, two, three, hey, four, hey, four. Hey. hey, hey, Mike, Mike, come on, let's go stop that. Leah, go stop that. Th- that's someone to... else who's also drunk. That's a friend of the guy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they're all drunk, and and Mike sorted them out. Don't Ooh. don't punch people though. But what could he have done? Get got. He could have reported them. Maybe reported and, them. And had them taken well, off the flight. they're still on the ground. Yeah. God, they're still on the ground. ground. Still on the ground. Absolutely. It was as they were boarding the plane. Oh, so Mike whipped him and then got off. No, Mike was, no, they were, they were boarding the plane and Mike was sitting down just, you know, mind your own business mm. as you do when, you, when you've loaded onto a plane. You know, getting your book out, getting yeah. your Air- AirPods. And this guy just starts loading into him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's like in his ear. Like he's leaning yeah, up Yeah, yeah, but like him. after he gives him a... a, a a lesson, a sharpen up. I think Mike got off the plane. Oh, did he? Did he? Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah oh. right. He's like, I'm out. <clears throat> well, you would too. Mike drop. I had Fair a similar enough. experience on a bus with Acker. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm excited Your about teammates. our uh, next guest. If you are Melbourne born and bred like me, you are going to know this person from delicious meals that you had in the 90s mm. and 2000s. I'm so excited. <laughs> Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. In the 90s, something that my best friend's mum, who recently passed away, used to do with me and my best friend when we were teenagers was take us out to nice restaurants. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, Pam Thompson was her name. She was responsible for, you know making me enjoy good, different food. Oh. And one of the favourite places that we would go to on a Sunday afternoon, she would take us, me and Beck, was the Great Toto in Victoria Street. On the in, corner there. Yeah. On the corner, right up the end. Everybody in the 90s and 2000s had their favourite Vietnamese restaurant mm. in uh, in Victoria Street, and ours was Toto. What intersection? Was, I'm trying to see it. Hoddle Street? Hoddle Street, Hoddle Street in Victoria. Gotcha, it's sort gotcha. of the last one before there's like the a... The Bridge. There's yep. a hardware store. Yeah. Yep. It's in that. It's really its own thing. Mm. And we would go there a lot, right? And um, the, the thing that I loved the most, uh, apart from the chilli chicken and lemongrass uh, and steamed rice, which we would order every single time, oh, oh my God, it's so good, was... This framed portrait of the happiest baby 
you've ever seen in your life. This was a huge portrait. And if you were in Melbourne in the 90s, you would you'd be driving along now going, oh, my God, yes, the happy baby at Toto. It's on our Instagram. It's on our Instagram. You'll see it and it will just take you back to the Whoa. great times when Victoria Street was bustling and alive with amazing smells and sounds and food and uh, cheap eats and all tasty. But this portrait, it must be two metres by one metre, massive. It's a happy baby. The happiest baby. Well, I was on Instagram last weekend and I saw a broadsheet article saying that Toto, which had been pretty much closed since 2016, was back and rebranded under Tai Tai. Now, I could not get me and the kids in there quick enough. And I was thrilled to see that the portrait is still there. Still there. The happy baby still presides over that delicious restaurant and just it sends the vibe exactly where it's got to go. Is it a Hawaiian shirt, this it's, Happy Baby's It's a Hawaiian wearing? shirt. <laughs> and it looks like the Happy Baby is, like, standing at the restaurant welcoming All people. All he's like, missing is a smoke. He is, <laughs> he is magnificent. And when I was paying the bill, I said, look, I've got to ask about this Happy Baby. Where is the Happy Baby now? And the beautiful waiter said, well, the Happy Baby is upstairs. What? The Whoa. happy baby is now a grown man of 32 years old. And I me? said, I want to talk to the happy baby now. And we welcome him to the studio. Welcome, Thomas, the happy baby. How are you guys? Thanks yes. for having me. Real Ma- kind of you. You. <laughs> I mean, I've got to talk about this portrait. Mm. Do you love it or is it the bane of your existence? Look, I, I hated it growing up, but um, I missed it since, ever since I lived abroad. Um, it's funny that a, a, lot of, a lot of stories come with that photo. Um, everyone's always saying, oh, is that the king of Vietnam when he was young? <laughs> yes. or, or they'd say, or say, oh, that baby, he looks like three years old. And my mum my mom would say, he's only 18 months at the yeah. time. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I love w- his barn maze at that stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has, I mean, it's an iconic Melbourne image. Mm. You know, do you think... Has anyone ever recognised you from the Happy Baby portrait? I used to get it on the tram. I used to get it at school. I used to get it everywhere. Like, That's great. Yeah, it's, got, it, it's haunted me in that sense. And as I was growing up, it annoyed me, annoyed me a lot. Oh, because you still look like the Happy Baby. There's, I mean, sometimes people, um, you know, you can't recognise them when they're a baby, but you are definitely still that Happy Baby. Oh, I can still see as that. Looking, thanks, still as good looking. Still as good looking. At least when you grew up and you were drunk getting home, you know which was your place. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The Happy yeah. Baby has yeah. old man energy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I love about Wisdom. the Happy Baby. Wisdom. Always oh did. God. Now, Happy Baby Thomas, I want to talk about um, Toto. Mm. It's named after you, I'm guessing, because yeah, your name is Thomas. Yeah, my Vietnamese name is Ta, so it's right. Ta Ta, which means long life. So TT is what it's actually called. Everyone pronounces it Tai Tai, but that's my older sister's name. Right. We used to have a little bit of a joke. My middle sister doesn't have a restaurant named after her, so we yes. would say that you're not you're not as loved as the Typical other middle you sister. Know. Typical, <laughs> middle sister typical syndrome. Middle. Jan Brady. So yeah. there's TT or Tai Tai, T-H-Y, T-H-Y, and Toto. And there was, from, you know... Or, like ordinary restaurant goers like me, there was a, a we thought it was a rivalry which one you prefer, but it was we were actually putting our money in the same coffers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the same yeah, family. Yeah. Oh. We passed it on. We passed it on. Are you surprised and... to hear that, Dave? Yeah, I because... didn't know that. I remember Tai Tai. I remember Toto. Yeah, it was well. like, oh no, Tai Tai's better. No, Toto's better. But right. actually, you, it's the same family, which I'm only mm. learning today. Mm. So Toto, that big building on the corner that you know has given millions of delicious meals. Is back. Tell us wh- where did you go? What's happened? It is the same Fun family. Fact, we bought it from. We bought it. it. Used to be called Wrigley's Pub back in 1989. Right. Um, so my parents, you know, hardworking immigrants, took that over. Um, Mum used to work at Toyota, so she used to cook for all her staff at Toyota. <laughs> oh, you're right? Jonathan. at the factory, and then they're like, "Man, you should open a restaurant." Yeah. Met dad, and then you know, hardworking refugees opened this restaurant. Yeah. Um, next thing you know. You know, 25 years later, um, they were 25 work- million spring rolls. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, they, they, they wanted to retire. They were tired. Mm. They wanted to pass the business on to the kids. The kids didn't really want it. Mm-hmm. Mm. So we, we, uh, we sold it to some people that were, seemed pretty capable at the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's code. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, well, they were running it up until the COVID. Situation, the pandemic, running and obviously it, that it was up or running it down. Oh, running it uh, round and round. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. did their best. Yeah, yeah. everyone mm. did their best. Um, and yeah, so obviously the pandemic wasn't kind to the industry. Yeah, and then so they gave up the lease, but they bought the name. 
right? They 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 had purchased right. the business. So we were like, my mum has been doing a lot of cooking for the family. She's she was thinking to herself like, I, there's only so much cooking I can do for my friends. Yeah, there's only so much charity cooking she that I can itch, do. She needed a scratch. And she's, yeah, so she um she's like, let's just. Let's just take it over and it's do it again. Do it. Well, Get let me tell you, it. it is back and it is still unbelievably delicious. We had the spring rolls in the in the lettuce leaves and heaps of Vietnamese mint and the chilli chicken lemongrass was there. Oh. Unbelievable. Um, my new favourite, which I'd never tried, was the Vietnamese coleslaw with poached chicken. Oh, Unbelievable. Super Get healthy. in. Get in there. It's exactly the same. The happy baby is there. Are you in the kitchen? Are you on the tools at all, Happy Baby? No, I'm, I'm the lucky one who doesn't have to work at the business. You should host no, a party. You should host have the Happy Baby party. Yourself? No, not at all, mate. Not yeah, at so all, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, next, the next generation will have to uh, replace the photo. We've 100%. got four nephews, though, and they're, they're, they're itching to get on the wall, I hope. Well, get there. <laughs> get there. It is um, every bit as good as it always was. And thank you so much for coming in, Thomas. No, thanks baby for having me, Toto. everyone. So lovely. Awesome. What a man. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Good. Uh, Dave's in Pangy's chair today. Yeah, yeah, been down the beach over Easter. Um, had um, relatives coming over on Saturday. I did that mad. You have to go to the supermarket on Easter Saturday. Yeah, yeah it's scramble. It's a mad scramble. Absolutely. Went down, heaps of people there. Oh yeah, heaps. Went down to the food works and they, they've got like an ice room where you, you have to walk in in the bottle shop sort of area to get a bag of ice. Mm. So Kira's like, get a bag of ice for the drinks. I go in the ice room and I'm obviously stressed. And I get the ice. I'm like, oh my god, it's so cold in here because it's a freezer. Mm. But I can't work out how to get out of the ice room. Oh my god! I'm like stuck, and I could see people just going about their normal shopping and stuff. And then, like, <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna die in here. And the, the food works ice room. It's, it's like, like a storyline from an <laughs> '80s film. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's, like, yeah. it's like, and so eventually, um, there was some kid staring at me eating an icy pole, and I'm like, "How do you get?" Any? And he pulled the door open for me. Thanks very much. Uh, anyway, so so th- anyway, I go to the checkout, and I'm standing there, and uh, you know, I, I, and and uh, the, I'm talking to the checkout girl, and the young kid who works there comes over and goes, "Oh my god, we've got a genuine celebrity in our midst." I'm like, "Okay, yes. so I'm wearing a mask. Yes. Come on, relax." Ha! And, <laughs> And the girl goes, "Who?" And I go, oh, "I'm right here." You know. Yeah. And then she, then she, and he goes, "Bailey Smith's over there." So you know, <laughs> the Western yes, Bulldogs, absolutely, hunk. Yeah, the one with the the mullet, he's great hair, the most, uh, great hair, and he's most on, Instagram followers of any AFL player, and he's on um, billboards at the moment, absolutely, in underwear for Bonds, I think. What a star! He's like a wild stallion. Yeah, anyway, he is. He's on the uh, wallpaper of most young girls' uh, iPads yeah. and phones. Yeah. Oh, he stands out, yeah. and he, so he comes over to the checkout that we, I'm standing at, and he picks up the Herald Sun, and he goes to the back, and there's photos of him. He's like this, oh bloody hell! Oh, what they put that in there for? So he's sort of muttering to himself. <laughs> And then his girlfriend comes over and she's like, great. oh, Bailey, don't worry about it, Bailey. Don't leave it, Bailey. <laughs> he'd, be, like, yeah. he'd be rapt to be hearing this. <laughs> yeah, he's right. driving, what was... driving to training right now listening to this. What was he yeah, looking right. at exactly? Photos of himself Self. in the Herald Sun. Because he played the night before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, but he was one of the best players that night. He but was, I know, he, yeah, he's had actually good start. He's a I don't yeah, know what he was complaining about. So anyway, so anyway, me and the checkout girl were like, oh wow, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then about three minutes later, he comes back to the hill son by himself and starts looking again. Oh. And I go, mate, it's not a library. You're gonna have to buy that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. That's right. We've just come off uh, school holidays and yeah. uh, had the great fortune last week. My wife and I uh, were able to get away for a few days. and uh, Well, not really get away. It felt like a getaway. We stayed at home. Uh, the kids went down to mum and dad's. But we did go down the peninsula uh, Did you uh, Did you relight the fire? Uh, take that star. Relight my fire. Well, Swanee, I'm glad you asked. I thought I did, but uh, obviously my recollection of the night was a little bit different to uh, Kylie's recollection of the night and also mm. the sleep apps recollection of the night. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So me and Kyle's are just, oh, she's got all these vouchers to use up from her 40th. Remember that 18 yeah, months ago? Yeah, yeah. So we're going, right, hey, let's go down. We've got a, a voucher to a winery, so we went down there for lunch. And then we stayed at Jackalope, another Gorgeous. voucher there, Swanee. Lovely. So, and we had friends go down and stay with us. So, we, it's a big day. Mm. You had the lunch at the winery, a few drinks there, mm. nice uh, couple of Pinots, and then mm. uh, then back to Jackalope for dinner that night, a few more reds and everything else on top. So, it's a fair, fair to say we were uh, three sheets to the wind by the end of it. But we'd had a good night. We're jovial, time to go to bed. 
and uh, just finish up for the night. Uh, I went to sleep and uh, Cole set the sleep app, which I didn't realise because she wanted to wake up early, you know, maybe go for a walk around the winery. Um, and the next morning, uh, these are some of the recordings. So just the usual stuff after a few. So just to be clear, this app, it it records anything, any sound you make. How would you describe sleep apps, Sonny? I don't know. I've well, well, never got, you, used it. Well, you've got those, you had a sleep app this morning. It doesn't record you? anything. It doesn't though. record it. So no. there's some sleep apps. There's no where audio. It just tells it, you how long you've been asleep It can asleep record for. the quality of your sleep. Mm. Um, but it also picks up sounds. Yes, the sounds I didn't know about. This. Absolutely. absolutely, I can't even remember what the app what the app is. Anyway, oh, yes. um, so it does pick stuff up. Okay, well, yes. here I am. I've had a few, so it picks up the early part of the. And your interview. face is completely broken and stitched together with metal. Absolutely, yeah. So okay. the airways it's important to know. The airways are not great, and obviously yeah. by the sound of my voice, at times it's uh, it's a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Um, and when I've had a few beers, obviously this sound comes out. Too bad for a drunk person. Yeah. That's fine. That's Dave, fine. Dave O'Neill, what's that like? For a man with sleep apnea? Yeah, that's pretty bad. That sounds like you've got a bit of, oh, bit of sleep apnea. Issues there. Oh. I might add, it might have something to do with three or four bottles of red we'd had before yeah. that. A <laughs> uh, little bit of sleep talking came up next. Ooh. What are you talking about? You freak! What were you saying? What it was creepy. Saying, listen, 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 listen. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking saying? about? You're whispering toot, toot. to something. And Scully's right, saying, what are you talking about? Well, it might have been the mistress. This, uh, is, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it started off with snoring, into a little bit of sleep talking. Yeah. Mm. And when I, this is this runs in the family a little bit. You know, when I, uh, you know, when you go and stay in a, a new hotel or a new environment, sometimes when you've got to go to the toilet, it can be hard to find the bathroom. Oh, so very yes. hard. You need to wee in the wardrobe, did so you? So hard. <laughs> and you get lost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, these rooms are jack with uh, pitch black dark. And sometimes, you don't, black out and sometimes you don't even know, like, is the door a push, a pull, or a slide? And you just like, well, how well, do I uh, get in? Well, absolutely. I was, I was having these struggles. Forward, no, no, JP, follow the light. Oh, sorry. No, 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 this way. Look, 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 look at me. Follow the light. Yeah. In there. <laughs> your, your carer. Oh, my God. <laughs> follow, follow the light, John. <laughs> follow the light, John. I thought, I thought she's trying to guide me to the pearly gates. Absolutely. It sounds like you're on your way out. Pushed Absolutely. up the bridge. So, um, hey, by the way, real sexy environment going on. <laughs> poor, poor Kyle. This is hot. <laughs> so you ever wonder oh, what so we get up to with the kids are like? You're stumbling yeah, around, I'm stumbling yeah. around, half drunk and asleep. That's right. <laughs> and, and it just keep it. See, she's put, she's then decided oh. to put the little light on outside the uh, the toilet door. Yeah. Like light, you're babe. like you're three years old. That's, yeah, mm. <laughs> things escalate though. Yeah. No, look, look where the light is. The light. Don't go out there because you'll get locked out. No, the light. Yeah, I take it out there. Oh. She's talking about the hotel room the front door, door. Mm. because I've done that before. I've walked out a front door, down a flight of stairs, and end up out in the front street, out, out in the street in the surface paradise, looking up, going, "What the hell am I doing out here in my boxer shorts?" <laughs> Thank, so fortunately, she was obviously conscious. That didn't want the same thing to happen to Jackalope. Oh, well, it just keeps escalating. Though, uh, listen to this last bit. Wrong way, wrong way. No, no, no. Shh. There. No, you're going to walk outside, go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to the toilet. Oh, play that again. Just go to the toilet. Play that again, Dino. Listen to me shushing her like she's the one making the yeah. disturbance for the whole hotel guest. Wrong way, wrong way. No, no, no. Shh. <laughs> there. No, no. You're going to walk outside, Shush. go in there. Kylie. Oh, sure, sure. And I think what, what you have to remember here is sure, sure, sure. when Jonathan's had a few, yeah. he turns into like a very badly balanced gum tree. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah, my God. He buckles. So, the oh, the yeah. leading tower of pizza. He's just, he gets seven inches taller, yeah. you know. It's very it's very bizarre. Anyway, well, she's a strong woman. So you ask about the night. What a great night. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on over 100. All right, tidbit time. Who's going? May I offer you a tidbit? Bum, you may. Bum, bum, bum. The word swagger 
was not, as a lot of people think, invented by Jay-Z or Kesha. The dudes are lining up because they hear we got swagger. <laughs> One of the best uses of the word swagger. Yeah. It was actually invented by Shakespeare. Whoa! Uh, yeah. It first appeared in Shakespeare's plays, including in Midsummer Night's Dream and King Lear, first documented in 1725. You were quoting Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of modern words. In the same context as in walking. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah. A, it's yeah, a, a vibe. Swag, a vibe, yeah. 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 Justin Bieber was really championing swaggy for a long time. Oh, mm. was he? Yeah. Trying to get it up. Thank God it, it Could, died. Went down like a hot air balloon in Elf. Yeah, I'm glad it didn't. <laughs> um, I still love swaggering. Uh, yes, I do. You've got swagger. Thank you, Definitely. Christine. It's something that you just have. May I offer you a tidbit? You may. <clears throat> of course, this is the home of Over the Top. <laughs> the, the great movie. Remember Sylvester Sloan arm wrestling movie? How could I forget? Remember where his oh. character, Lincoln Hawk, mm. defeats Bull Hurley yep. in the big Las Vegas arm wrestling tournament? One of the greats. Well, and of course, this song, I would argue, made over the top famous. Oh, well, I'm yeah. Yeah. He's trying to win back his son, Jonathan. Absolutely. And why did he? That song was a pain in the ass. And this mm. is where Lincoln Hawk turns his hat around, <laughs> Swanee. He just goes up there and knocks Sonny out. Sonny bought us all one of those hats. He did yeah. too. I've still got it. I wore it the other day. You did? Oh, I work out. Well, you know, that's Sammy Hager singing that. I didn't uh, know that. He wasn't the original. Giorgio Moroder wrote it oh. uh, you know, and produced it up. But he initially got uh, John Wetton from the group Asia. It was the heat of the moment. Oh, yeah. Telling me what my heart is. Yes. I've forgotten. What a great song. So that's Asia. Yeah. Um, they they originally did Winner Takes It All, but Sylvester Stallone heard it and goes, no, that's not mean enough. So he gave it to Sammy Hagar. Who, who of course, ended up in Van Halen. Van Halen, that's right. And not only Sammy Hagar sang it, that's Sylvester Stallone on the backing vocals. Oh, oh what? I am thrilled. That was Jonathan. a real journey. You know, Sammy Hagar, you know, he replaced David Lee Roth in yeah. Van Halen. And yeah. what David Lee Roth's famous quote was, Every night he has to get up and sing some of my songs. I never sing any of his songs. <laughs> <It's quite laughs> yeah. oh. Well, he should have sang When It Takes It All. Then yes. Halo would have gone to the next level. Great song. Yeah. Jody. Great story. Jody from Rosebud. Jody. Hello. Give us. May I, may I offer you a chip in? You may, Jodes. Did you know that on the coin at the moment, Queen Elizabeth faces one way? And when Charlie gets on, he'll face the other way. Really? Wow, I didn't know that. Much like yeah. their relationship IRL. Oh. Am I right? <laughs> what? Do you know why, Jody? No, I don't know why. Maybe they just take it in turns, like the hokey pokey. As in which way they go. I, I had a, te- I, I had a teammate, uh, Tim Notting, who had one ear that stuck out a long Possum. way. Possum. Possum. Yeah. So we would have our headshots done before every season. Every player would face one way. Mm. However, Tim Noddings would always face the other way because he didn't want people to see his ear that stuck out. Oh. Full Yodas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jody, do you like wine, Jody? Why not? I love wine. Six bottles from Zonzo Estate. Authentic Italian cuisine paired with the perfect drop at Zonzo Estate. It's in the heart of the Yarra Valley. I'll tell you what, that, if mm. I'd won that prize 18 months ago, <laughs> it drank would, them not, all oh, would not have been a good outcome. John from Geelong. May I offer you a tidbit? You Straight may. To business, Get into it, John. Do you know that in Ballarat at Mars Bar Stadium, you can't buy a Mars Bar? What the hell? Oh, I love the good is, local one. That's bull. I know, John. How are you, John? Yeah, John. good day. It's just shattering, isn't it? I, I went starving that day. <laughs> How do you know, John? Talk to us about Met this. Met John at a gig in uh, Geelong, and we've become friends, haven't we, John? Mm. We, we are good mates. We're fellow cat supporters, and John runs a few comedy gigs. Do you oh, have, nice. John, do you have Dave's number, obviously? Of course he does. So, you know, that's t- 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 tomorrow for the uh, bull- the Bulldogs play Adelaide at Mars Stadium tomorrow. So, uh, you know, no Mars, Mars Bar's bars. available. That's ridiculous. Only no. Milky Ways. Um, you have got, got, got to change that. Hey, John, this must be a lucky day because you've won a copy of Life and Football by Jonathan Brown. Oh, no. lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Johnny, have you read that? <laughs> Does it come with a Mars bar? Yes, we'll, we'll chuck in. We'll, we'll sort it out. Tell you what, I can sign it for you, Johnny. Yes, Johnny. Oh, good, Brownie, good. He's thrilled. You're worth, you're worth $2 now, not $1. Another Rats. happy customer. John from Geelong. Robin in Heathmont. Hi. 
Hi. May I offer you a tidbit? You may, Robin. Birds have a single opening that's used for eggs, all forms of digestion waste and reproduction. It's called a cloaca, hence the development of the term up the cloaca. Wow. Really? Robin, I love this. I didn't That's know fantastic. that. Yeah. Cloaca. I didn't know that. Mm. I did know that, but it's still a great tip. The clacker is a great, great saying. saying. It is yeah. a great saying. Yeah. It clacker. is. We haven't uh, spoke of your clacker in a while, John. Your uh, brand new one. It's good. It's... Um Oh, you know, I, I like you to play. An egg? Well, I like to play every now and again. I go busking in the city, oh. and I uh, like to, you know, get requests for some tunes. I just wonder if you could play something nice for us now. Really? Have you got any coins? Yeah, we'll pay sure. you, man. You okay. ready? One of the ready? queens hit on it. Hang on, I got two five cent bits. <laughs> I want my five cents back. Jonathan and I just... Really good, mate. Kawaka. Jonathan and I just locked eyes in seven years of shared history. <laughs> Robin, the Kawaka. Was, can't believe we're exchanged. still doing this. Can't believe it. Robin, you were serenaded by Jonathan's... Kalaka. Kalaka. Oh, You've got a what if voucher, mate. What if uh, you took the jet ski to the seaplane to the brekkie oh buffet? My God. It's time Ooh. for uh, to make up for missed holidays. Visit whatif.com. What if is Aussie for travel. Thanks, Robin. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Now, in the studio. Oh, my God, he looks exhausted. Jocks <laughs> <laughs> on Fellow, the sexy Scott slash Italian chef who's a judge on MasterChef. Headphones he on, is Jockey. back on the show, and we absolutely love him. You can also watch him on MasterChef, which continues 7.30pm Sunday night on 10. Here's Jock. The gorgeous Jock Zonfrilo. Ooh. Welcome. Thank you. You've had a, you've been Busy. working out of a sweat in the kitchen, making us jaffle. It was like a pressure test, huh? Yeah. And I walked in and saw them doing it. I went, oh my, it's like being in a kitchen. I thought I was going to get yelled at or something. <laughs> you can smell them from a mile away. You've yeah. given us what's a jaffle. And it's, it's, yeah, what's in so it? this is my favourite jaffle. So it's mortadella, smoked cheese, mozzarella cheese, a little bit of green olive, and a spritz of red wine vinegar inside Ooh. the toasting. Ooh, I've got a cholesterol <laughs> test today, mate. Nice. Jesus, this will help you. Right. This will help you. Mortadella <laughs> is the fix-all, haven't you heard? Oh, man. Well, is there, is there a problem good. with jaffles in that you can bite into them and they can be very hot, particularly the tomato? Of course, of course they're hot, but then there's no tomato in this. Yeah. So it doesn't serve. The, the thing, I never put tomato in a jaffle because it does come out and then it goes down and burns your chin and you get this. Weird. Yeah, it's you hazardous. do. It's not great. It's hazardous. Jock, it is so good. Yeah, is it good? Are we happy? Oh. Good, Swanny. Oh, my God, it's so good. Hey, you got to be careful to load up with too many ingredients in a toasted sanger. You can, and you know if you and it, I mean the true test of that is if you if you get your sandwich and and put a heavy heavy hand on it and squash it down before you put it in the toasting machine, mm. it'll actually save a lot of the cheese from oozing out while it cooks. So squish it down while it's all raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, squish it down because really? then then it doesn't you know it doesn't start pressing while it melts and then all your cheese comes out. So I love. Really love that MasterChef yeah, is doing a great Aussie Jaffle challenge. I'm here for it. Yeah. Because this is my kind of food. As you know, I made a panwich. Panwich. You and I are doing a it's book a on panwich. We are. Yeah, we are. Right. We've got to talk it's about ha- that. Yeah, we're talking about it. Yeah, it's we've got to, to do that. And I think a toasted sandwich is one of the greatest foods in the whole world. Nothing. Yeah. It's a great dinner. Everyone likes it too. Kids love it. Everyone Kids likes it. it. Easy. I'll be watching on Sunday night um, the Great Jaffle Challenge. It's and the be- I had the best day at work. <laughs> so there was 20, 24 contestants yeah. who all made jaffles. So you can imagine, I, had, ah. I tested every single one of them. And they're like, oh, you don't need to test all of the jaffles. Just test the ones. That-. And I'm like, nah, I'm trying <laughs> all of the jaffles. <laughs> Absolutely. Every single Were one Were there of any them. surprise ingredients? In fact, was this a, a thing in Glasgow where you grew up? Was there a, a, such a thing as a creamed corn jaffle? Or is that a very Aussie That's thing? Very very corn. Oh. Creamed corn. Have you ever heard of it? No, never. This it's is new. Surprisingly news. tasty. Well, wow. t- tin spaghetti? It would have had tin spaghetti jaffles. Tin spaghetti jaffles we had. I think mm. one of my other favourites is uh, butter chicken. So you get oh, you buy yeah, extra butter good. chicken and extra naan when you buy Indian or you make Indian. Shit, you dog. stick it in the fridge so it's cold. I've and then had you use the, naan, use the naan bread yeah. in the jaffle machine. Oh fill it full of butter chicken, put the naan bread on top. So you use naan bread instead. Yes! You're going yes. yes. full Harry right. Matt Sally over there. Oh my god! I've it's, had I've had I've best. got goosebumps. That means it's the best. yes, truly. Oh. Why is the humble seafood omitted from the toasted sandwich? Why? Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Don't have a you works, have tuna. Our tuna's good. Tuna's oh, good. No, come on. No, tuna are we, no, we going to have a tuna okay. conversation? They're I good. love tuna. It's cat food. Doc hates no, all, all, all sure. tuna. No, I don't know. I love fresh tuna, but canned tuna, hey, come on, that's for your cat. Isn't no. It? Yeah, it's in the not. Melts, a jalapeno and cheese tuna melt. Yeah. So delicious. The only thing canned tuna is good for is, yes. is one dish, vitello tonato. That's it. What's that? It's like veal, veal and tomato, and uh, veal tuna mayonnaise, basically. It's an Italian Yum. classic. Mm. But other than that, you just you fork it out onto a little plate and you give it to your cat. No, <laughs> wrong. What do you do? You, you fork, obviously fork haven't. Out. Yeah, you <laughs> fork it out. You use a fork. fork. Um, <laughs> you obviously <laughs> haven't had my tuna mornay. Yeah, clearly, clearly not. Classic, Love a tuna mornay. Classic seventies. Yeah, right. beautiful. Tasty as heck. Tuna mornay. It's tasty as fork. <laughs> I've got the shivers, but like the heebie-jeebie <laughs> shivers. You know what I mean? Not, well, well, not well, well, don't worry, she's got cats. Yeah, well, I do. I've got cats. one cat. Yeah, well, yeah. What was it like growing grow up in Glasgow? Like, what, what did your mum cook? So, well, mum's Scottish side of the family. Dad's Italian. So we oh, a lot of Italian food. Okay. Um, right. but, and the, the Scottish side is this mm. very... Uh, downtrodden tuna mono, no mince and tatties, you know, it's oh, like yeah. brown mince and boiled potatoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there are good versions of it. Um, yeah. They weren't to be Yum. found at my house, though. Lots of scotch, um, yeah, a lot. Jamison, a looking lot. forward to that. A Jameson's, lot. I want to ask you, um, no, it's, it's Irish, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Jameson's Irish. Yeah. We uh, we'll talk about that one earlier on today. We had <laughs> seen brave an Martin. iconic happy baby, uh, from. Toto slash Tai Tai in Victoria Street, a, yes. a legendary Vietnamese restaurant in this fair city. I just want to throw a nationality to you and you tell me what you order in that restaurant. Go on. French. Uh, Snails. Uh, steak and chips. No, I think it's, yeah, but I think it's steak frites. Steak frites. Mm. Oh, yeah, Classic. Yum. Vietnamese, Vietnamese. Vietnamese sauce. Vietnamese. Oh, rolls. The rice paper rolls. Rice oh. paper. Panko pasta. Okay. Chinese. Quick snacks. Um, I like the, 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 I think you call it in Melbourne the rainbow beef, the crispy chilli beef. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I don't it's know like, that. I'm uh, writing that it's down. It's crunchy. Cr- there's, I think there's a recipe on our website for that. Crispy chilli beef. Not, a sweet, yeah, not a sweet and sour pork, man. It's like, well, it's a, it's a hyped up chilli version of that. Is it? Right. Yeah, mm, so I'm going to try that. Japanese. Um... Sashimi for me. You can't, yeah. And if you get, like, we had Minamishima here in Melbourne. We mm-hmm. were there mm. um, the other month and it was just hectic. All right, that'll so, do. Uh, I've got Go a question on. for you. You were named, in 2018, you were named Australia's hottest chef. Whoa, I didn't know no, about no, this. Hot as in, hot as in, you know. We're talking about your physicality. Hotter, than, a, so, hotter, than, the, hotter than the uh, insides of a jaffel, if you know what I'm saying. Hey, absolutely. Uh, Jock, what's happened the last three years? <laughs> Why have you lost your title? Because to me, you look, you're still a good-looking man. You're holding your age magnificently. Who's, who's usurped you He's over the last very three young. years? Very young. I, I, do you know what? I don't know. I think it's because I'm not in the arena of chefs anymore, so I'm not included in the pool, which Ian, I think oh, everyone's it's probably it's glad about. It's a technicality. Ian yeah, Ewingson pipped him, sadly. <laughs> 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 Peter Russell Clark for the win. <laughs> G'day, Peter. Jeez, you'd be flat if Huey knocked you off. <laughs> <laughs> Master chef. How's life anyway? Well, you personally, how's things going? You happy? You all good? Really good. We've been, uh, we got stuck in Melbourne in lockdown, but then now that Melbourne sort of opened up again and we're, we're eating out in restaurants, so now I'm seeing Melbourne really for the first Feels time. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, the last few months, so it's been brilliant going out. Melbourne's such a cool city. It's oh, best. it's the oh, best. Yeah. I love it's it. The best. I, I really forgot that you're here filming. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be harassing you for a coffee and a walk. Do it. I'm in. Done. I walk. Hey, you know I don't exercise. Yeah, I know, but uh, don't worry. For you, I'll Chrissy piggyback, Swan, I'll piggyback you. I will exercise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank and, you. And just quickly to yeah. finish off, still yeah. the greatest stuff up you've witnessed on live television, oh, uh, yes. Jock, when Swanee yeah. doing the bacon challenge, cooking a quiche, forgot to put the bacon in. <laughs> Still the greatest the best, stuff the, up for you. The, the best, the, the best part about that was how she tried to get away with it, and then, <laughs> and then just gave up and went, "I forgot it." Yes, honestly, I'll man, never live it down. Honesty, though, you know, mm-hmm. that's yeah, Chrissy she Swan. She yeah. brought it. Master Chef continues seven thirty Sunday night on ten. Jock, thanks for coming in as always. Thanks for having me. See you, mate. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Hey, everybody! It's Friday. What does it mean? End of the week, look back what it was, what it is, what we did, what we did it. End of the week, you're getting out of bed with your alarm ringing at your head instead of getting ready for the weekend. Let's go through the week. Little bit of brownie, little bit of Chrissy. Somewhere between there's hang next all three. Cheek, cheek, times I'll break this. Good morning. How great's a long weekend. Straight
straight into another long weekend. Oh! Oh! Beautiful! Anyway, uh, this one's going to be a little shorter than usual as we only had four days to talk about. So let's get going. Wait a sec. I love this bit. On Tuesday, Chrissy reported the news of Johnny Depp's trial. My God, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's trial. It is a circus. There is a fan outside the courtroom with an alpaca wearing a blackboard that says justice for Johnny. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> Richmond Tigers star Nathan Broad was on the show and talked about his teammate Dusty Martin. How's he going, he's Dusty? Him. He's good, I think. Yeah, he's happy, which is the main thing. Um, yeah, we're sending him a message and send some love back. But God, we could do with him. I'm sure watching his like play doesn't uh, make him that happy. By the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I can um, probably see why he doesn't want to come back. <laughs> we talked about driving manual cars. I miss driving around the streets with a manual car. I don't. It's great. I don't. I went through the rigmarole of getting a manual license and my first car was manual and then I ended up, you know, 20 years later with an automatic car and the first thing I thought was, why on earth have I been struggling with a manual? My first rickshaw was a manual. (laughs) (laughs) This music is the great Tommy Emanuel as they're talking about manuals. It's the best I've got. But this song is called Who Dares Wins from the 1991 album Determination. And if you are like me and you were born in the 80s, raised in the 90s, you will understand the concept of your parents having four CDs in the car for 10 years. This was one of those CDs. I can remember every song from this album, note for note, and nothing makes me more nostalgic than this. Yes, Tommy! What are we doing, Dad? We're getting in the car? Going down to maybe Video Easy, Blockbusters or Movie World, grabbing an overnight and a weekly. Are we going to get Maccas? Maybe we might try this new restaurant everyone's been talking about called Nando's. Whoa! Or are we going bougie and getting takeaway from Choice? Oh, nostalgia, you wonderful beast. Moving on, Chrissy was, um, uh, she was in the car for a bit. Yesterday I got home. First of all, I pulled in the the garage and I just sat there for a while. It was long enough that the lights that come on in the garage turn off. You know, and then I'm just sitting in my car in darkness. I breathed for a bit and then I came home. (laughs) Walked in. Hi, everyone. You know, pretending. And, um... (laughs) Chrissy then told us about how she popped out and got some groceries. You know, I eat a lot of apples and I'd run out of apples. So I said to my 10-year-old, why don't you put on some shoes and we're going to go to the apple shop? And he's like, yes. Oh, really? All in. Yes, all in. Really? You have never seen a 10-year-old put his shoes on quicker. But he thought we were going to the Apple store. <laughs> <laughs> is coming to Melbourne. Keep listening to grab your tickets from Jamie Rowe. But uh, we're all very excited he's coming. Uh, I love Harry Styles. I know you do. It's... More than is appropriate for a woman of my advancing years. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Styles Whoa. is coming. Were you so excited? Were you weeping with excitement? I, 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 I pissed myself. <laughs> <laughs> Brownie had an interesting revelation. His wasn't my choice, OK? I'm just going <laughs> to say now. If you... Yeah. They've been an impediment, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of kids, Chrissy's son Leo was playing guitar. And obviously, what a better time or a better example of guitar than playing, once again, Tommy Emanuel's album Determination from 1991, Song 2, Mountain of Truth. I got a little off track there. Anyway, Leo was playing guitar. Leo yeah, was so funny last night. I just remember he was playing guitar. Yes. And then he goes, That hurt my fingers. <laughs> you said, That hurt my ears. <laughs> hey, Chrissy, what have you got an update on? Guys, I've got an update on Black China. And there's a court case at the moment. She's taking the Kardashians to court over defamation. Black China insists she was just joking when she put a gun to Rob's head. <laughs> <laughs> she also said wrapping an iPhone cord around his neck was done in jest. Can I just say uh, something? Is, yeah. Being with Black China, it sounds like it's an exciting time. Quick reminder on the back of that song, <laughs> it 
It's another long weekend. Anyway, Sam had some interesting news. Two dairy-free milk alternatives sold at Woolworths supermarkets have been pulled from the shelves. Macro-certified organic unsweetened coconut milk. Jeez. Yeah, you know that one? Yeah, I do. Jeez, it's pretty specific. With a best before date of April 3rd, 2023. Hmm. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you the other one. It's a bit of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, we talked about the night before's television, if that makes sense. There was a debate last night. I heard that. Instead, you were watching. Lego Masters. Lego Masters. Lego Masters. <laughs> you should do more voiceover work. <laughs> it's terrifying. Welcome to Lego Masters. Hey, how's Brickman looking? He's good. Yes. He had a change up of his runners. Did he? Yeah. Yes. He rocks the runners like Jerry Seinfeld. Apparently, he leaves them on too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, that's it from me. We're running a little early, so for some reason, to fill time, Brody suggested that he'd sing a rendition of R. Kelly. Obviously, I thought, what a great idea, and I'll help him out. Anyway, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I dream about it every night and day. I spread my wings and Weekend. Bye. Chrissy, Sam and Brown, every show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brown, yeah. oh, unless it's a weekend. Level 100.